Hello, my name is Zach Gibbs and I'm a content developer within Education Services inside Juniper Networks. And today we will be going through the Management Instance Learning Byte. All right, so what do we need to do? Well, first let's look at the topology. We have a, it's a data center fabric that we have. It's got a VXLAN, the EVPN going on. And what's happening here is for one reason or another, there's a default route that is floating around in the underlay network. However, we want to be able to access an NTP server out the management network instead of accessing it through the underlay network. It's not reachable through the underlay network. We need to access it through the management network. And that NTP server is not on the same network as the management network. And so what we could try to do is block that default route that's floating around, but maybe it's there for a reason. There's, there could be a legitimate reason for it. And so if we were to configure a default route, and have that in the main instance, say a static route, well then that would probably be more preferred, but then we would lose the benefit of having that default route. And so what we can do here is we can configure the management instance that will put the management interface in its own routing instance and allow us to access things like an NTP server on a separate network through the management network. Okay, so with that being said, let's go ahead and jump to the CLI. And we're just going to configure one device here. It's going to be Leaf 1. We're not going to worry about the other devices. The configuration would be exactly the same. So we're going to focus on Leaf 1. So let's go ahead and jump to the CLI of Leaf 1 and get this going. Okay, so here is the CLI of Leaf 1. Let's jump into configuration mode. And we first need to go to Edit System. And here we can set the management instance. Well, before we commit it, though, I do want to show the routing table. And you can see here, let me scroll up, that we do have, this is the management network. We can see it's the EM0 interface. We can see the interface or the IP address that is applied to that interface. And we can see the actual network itself. So that is in the inet.0 route table. And so we want to get that out of that route table because you can see here that we have that default route that I was talking about. That is also in the main uh, routing instance in the inet.0 route table. And so let's go ahead and commit the configuration. I'll show you the difference. And notice how it kind of hangs here a little bit. If this was just a normal commit, it wouldn't take that long. But what we did here was we were connecting into this device on the management IP address through EM0, and that was in the main routing instance. Well, we just moved that interface out of that main routing instance and put it in the management instance. And so, that will cut off the SSH connection. So let me go ahead and make a clone of this session. Let's uh, look at the route table again. And you can see here, let me scroll up. You can see here we have a new table called the mgmt underscore junos dot inet dot zero. And you can see that that management interface em zero or the routes that are associated with the management interface are now in that routing instance. And that's great, but really not doing much different with it right now. So we need to do some configuration. So let's go ahead and configure that default route to point out that management interface in the management instance. So what we need to do there is let's go ahead and jump into configuration mode. Then we need to go to routing instances and we need to configure the actual routing instance. And that is going to be MGMT underscore Junos. It matches that name of that route table we saw. And then we need to configure the default route. And it's just the normal routing option static route configuration for the default route. And then we need to specify our next hop. And something interesting here is if you know much about routing instances, if you don't configure an instance type, it's going to be a forwarding instance by default. And so you might think to yourself, well, like, well maybe I want this to be a virtual router instead of a forwarding instance. And so let's go ahead and attempt to do that. And I'll tell you right now, this isn't going to work. And the commit error will show that the management instance can't be anything other than a forwarding instance. And so keep that in mind that you're just going to be forwarding traffic here. It's not meant for any sort of routing. And so let's delete the instance type. And you could set this to instance type forwarding and the commit would be fine because it defaults to instance type of forwarding. Let's go ahead and delete that and then commit that configuration again. 
And then let's look at the route table again. Route tables, there'll be more than one, of course. And you can see here that we have the management Junos inet.0 table here. And you, we now have a default route pointing out the EM0 interface. And we still have that default route that is in the inet.0 table. That hasn't been touched. And so we have two separate routing tables, and this is what we want to see. Now recall that with the criteria for this learning byte, we wanted the, uh, to reach an NTP server that's not on the management network, but we wanted to reach it through the management network. And we could do that now that we have that default route pointing through the management interface to the default gateway of the management network that we see here. And so, but we need to configure NTP, right? So let's go to NTP and we need to configure a NTP server. So set, you know, it's under edit system NTP, set server, and we're gonna configure an NTP server here. And then we have to specify the routing instance, the management routing instance that is. And then let's commit that configuration. And before we uh, attempt to sync with the NTP server here, let's just see if we can ping it first. And so let's uh, type this in. And we have to specify the management routing instance, of course. And we can ping that, and that's great. That's what we want to see. And if we attempt to ping that in the main routing instance, you'll see it's not reachable. And that's why we need to reach this NTP server through the management instance, through the management network. Okay, so let's set the uh, NTP server sync up. You can see there that it was able to reach it. It's able to get some information and it'll take just a minute to fully synchronize. And we can see that by showing the uh, show NTP associations command. I guess I need to do a run show NTP associations. And it is synchronized already. Great, that was fast. You can see the asterisk on the far left. That tells us that it is synchronized properly. And one last thing we can check, we can look at the system clock. And we can see here that the time source is NTP clock. All right, so that does bring us to the end of this learning byte. In this learning byte, we demonstrated how to configure the management instance. So as always, thanks for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.